Sporting San Antonio starts right now. It was a loud and stormy night with heavy rain, hail, and lots of lightning making their way across the city and parts of South Texas. Thousands of people are still without power this morning. More than 100,000 people dead in the U.S. from COVID-19. I'm Inez de Liquitera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. And taking you outside live with uh, city cam, or live cam, I should say, the calm after the storm. We'll get your forecast from and, Mike. And good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is May 28th. Wow, what a bunch of storms last night. Unbelievable that I slept through it again. <laughs> And I woke up this morning and I saw the pictures and the video and I was like, how is this even possible? It was unbelievable. And it wasn't just the light show, Mike. There oh, the was hail. some pretty significant hail. Um, I had pea sized at my house in Stone Oak, but I saw a video and pictures of up to golf ball size. I yeah, think. A, a viewer sent me one and it was, it was huge chunk of ice. Got a couple uh, going to be showing throughout the course of the morning um, that were almost like tennis balls. Yes. Oh, wow chunks of, of hailstones so and most of it seemed like it was the kind of the northern half of Bear County because right here in downtown I know we had a, a lot of lightning and everything but I didn't see any hail at my house at all so a lot of winds well, and you lost power for a little bit can too. we be done now no oh, uh, I've okay. got a per, potentially another round coming in on kind of to the west uh, say west 281 later on uh, this evening now more on that in a second first of all yes things have definitely settled down it's kind of a pleasant morning out there a lot of i mean even driving into work a lot of trees down branches leaves stripped off the trees everything like that we did have uh, just a couple of hours ago there was another severe storm in zavala county that severe thunderstorm warning was canceled and that is all working its way everything's moving on down to the south you may get a couple of uh, thunderstorms around laredo but nothing as far as anything being severe and temperatures right now are in the uh, mid to upper 60s, a little bit below normal. Uh, we've got a lot of mold out there, although it did drop down significantly uh, from the previous day's count. Previous day's count, remember, was up in the five digits. 80 at noon, 88 for a high temperature. We are going to keep a lot of clouds around today, and there will be a couple of thunderstorms trying to develop out to the west again today. Some of those then later on tonight may try and work their way a little bit further to the east as far uh, to the east as San Antonio. That's going to be then into the evening hours. And once again, Storm Prediction Center has all of the area under a uh, marginal risk. And then that slight risk, it's ramped up there in some of our western counties later on this afternoon and going into this evening. Talk about that and take a look ahead at a fairly decent looking weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your day. Okay, currently dealing with one accident right now. That's going to be southbound State Highway 151 at Westover Hills Boulevard. Now, this is a three car accident, and it looks like one of the vehicles slipped in mud on the main lanes. So just be careful if you're heading on 151. Some of the effects from the rain last night is now affecting the roadway still with this mud. So they slipped there, and now this accident's still active, and a wrecker is on the way. Let's take a look at the drive times 151. Eastbound 151 to 1604 to 90 is nine minutes, and eastbound Highway 90 to 1604 to 30. Uh, to 35 is 11 minutes, so still really good times. All right, taking a look at some parts of the city, we got 90 in Medeo Creek looking good, um, 10 at Probant, uh, very little cars on the roadway there, that's looking great, and uh, 90 at Couples looking even better. Well, hope everyone gets to work safely and has a great morning. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Residents are waking up this morning to the damage from last night's severe weather, from hail to power outages, even fires due to lightning strikes. Sarah Costa joins us live from home to talk about some of that damage. And Sarah, one strike caused some real damage to a north side home. It did, and that home is actually, was actually still under construction, so luckily no one was actually living in that home. This happening just as those storms blew through at 10 o'clock when firefighters were called out to the far north side of San Antonio. It's actually in a neighborhood that is still being built. It's on near 1604 and 281 near Encino Park near Redland Road. That area is so new it's not even on the map yet. Firefighters say that it was a lightning strike that went through the roof of a home that wasn't yet occupied, 
Crews say that the strike probably happened earlier when that storm blew through the north side closer to 9 p.m. and was able to smolder for a good time before firefighters were called to the scene. The damage is being estimated around $10,000. No one was injured because of that fire. Like we said, no one was home. And this is just one of the many calls that firefighters went out for lightning strikes last night, but it wasn't just lightning strikes. There are some residents still without power. So let's take a look at the latest CPS energy power outage map. And let me update it so we know exactly what we're looking at outage wise. So it's 222 active outages right now with 4,661 total customers affected, a total number of customers served 849,223. So when you're looking at that map, that pink right in the heart of San Antonio, that almost park area right down Broadway into the north part of downtown is still having the worst at 27 outages with 1,085 people still affected in the orange areas. Also on the north north side and far northwest side have also the most with 17 outages far north and the northwest side, about 828 customers still affected. So again, if you if it happens to you in the future or if you are one of these customers, you can always watch us on any of your uh, digital devices with our case app app. Also, like Mike mentioned earlier, keep sending those photos in to our case at weather app on case at connect. I know I sent some in last night when I got some of that golf ball sites hailed on the northeast side. So keep sending those photos and we'll show them throughout GMSA reporting live from home. I'm Sarah Costa case at 12 news. Mark and Leslie. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Yeah, we've even got streetlights out on 281 itself in the uh, almost basin area south of the airport. All right, more updates to come. The number of coronavirus cases in Bear County has gone up by 45, bringing the total to 2,525. A new death was also added, bringing the total number of deaths here to 70. 92 coronavirus patients are in the hospital, 39 in ICU. While there are recoveries, there are still more than 1,100 active cases. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says even though the numbers are up, we are still in good shape. The time it takes to double our cases is slowing down. And as tests continues, uh, testing continues, our only 3.6% of those testing are positive. Our positivity rate over the last several weeks has gone down. We maintain a strong level of capacity in our hospitals, and the severity of illness is also under control. We are seeing that, that number of positive patients tick up, but they're moderately ill. In comparison to surrounding counties, Bear County's COVID-19 numbers and deaths are lower. Meanwhile, the country has passed a grim milestone. Over 100,000 lives have now been lost to COVID-19. This says 14 states continue to see a growing number of cases. ABC's Inez de la Quatera is in Washington with more. This morning, more than 100,000 lives lost to COVID-19 in the U.S. That's higher than the number of U.S. military combat deaths in every conflict since the Korean War. Some of those who've left us, Paul Logan, an Indianapolis high school coach, Five-year-old kindergartner Skylar Herbert, daughter of Detroit first responders, and Rolando Aravena was a communications field technician at Verizon, sent to a New York hospital to help prepare for the surge. A week later, he fell sick. He just looked at me and he said, Mel, I never knew a love like this before, and I love you so much. This country, as I say often, has been through some, some really challenging, terrible times. You know, world wars, depressions, uh, 9-11, this falls in that category. President Trump made no mention of those lost during his trip to Florida Wednesday, while his 2020 opponent, former Vice President Joe Biden, says the grim milestone our could have Americans, been avoided. There are moments in our history so grim, so heartrending, that they're forever fixed in each of our hearts, a shared grief. Today is one of those moments. Meanwhile, the nation pushing on with reopening. Washington, D.C. will lift its stay-at-home order on Friday. More Las Vegas hotels are planning to reopen June 4th. It's not burden at all. I mean, you just do try to be safe for everybody. Cases now rising in at least 14 states, including California. We are moving forward. Let us not forget the most vulnerable amongst us. Dr. Anthony Fauci also said a second wave is not inevitable and that there's a good chance the nation will have a vaccine by the end of the year. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, 
Washington. Just about 440, 68 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, hot weather and the coronavirus masks aren't two things that go very well together. We're going to check out ways to make them a little more comfortable. An arrest finally made in a double murder case investigation that spread across four states involving that young fugitive. Details ahead. And live cam giving us a look outside. Thought we were done with the severe weather. Well, maybe not. Mike says we have another chance for some storms later on this afternoon. He'll have details. In your morning headlines on Wall Street, investors pumping up the market on hopes the government will pay cash bonuses to unemployed Americans who return to work. The Dow gained another 500 points, and financial experts say it could gain more ground today. The S&P 500 and NASDAQ Composite also finished a volatile day of trading on a positive note. Both fell into negative territory early yesterday, but ended joining the Dow in posting gains. Marks the third straight day of growth for all three indices. Well, a Connecticut double murder suspect is now in custody after running from police across four states. Police say 23-year-old Peter Manfredonia was arrested last night in Hagerstown, Maryland. Neither officers were injured during the arrest. Authorities say the University of Connecticut student allegedly killed two men and seriously injured another on Friday in Connecticut. And Fredonia is also believed to have abducted a woman from a home. She was later found unharmed in New Jersey and is back with family. Police say the motive for the attack is unclear. They are expected to release more details, though, later today. Another blow in the efforts to expand mail-in voting in Texas. The Texas Supreme Court has now ruled that a lack of immunity to the coronavirus does not qualify a voter to apply for mail-in ballots. Under current Texas election code, Texas voters have to give a reason for applying for a mail-in ballot. The list of pre-approved reasons includes being disabled, being out of country, or being older than 65. Some have argued that lack of immunity to the virus should qualify as a disability. The issue is likely headed to the U.S. Supreme Court. Early voting for the July runoff elections begins next month. Stay tuned. 444, 68 degrees. Still ahead, HBO Max gives an unexpected surprise to Harry Potter fans on its first day of streaming. Welcome back, everybody. Your time now is 447. Well, as temperatures get warmer, people are realizing just how hot masks can get. ABC's Becky Worley has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, face masks and hot weather. With summer heat starting to arrive, wearing a mask can feel downright miserable. On a 78 degree day, I use a remote thermometer to gauge the temperature of the mask I'm wearing. Heat will definitely make it more difficult for people to be outside with masks on, but it is not impossible. Dr. Anne Ramoyne is an infectious disease professor and worked extensively studying Ebola in Africa. She says while wearing a mask in the heat is hard, there are some ways to make it more comfortable. Wear a mask that is light in color because dark colors will draw the sun to you. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have all the tips to keep you cool. Plus, Dr. Jen Ashton and a dermatologist weigh in live with what you need to know to keep yourself protected and your skin healthy. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. 448, you might notice some streetlights out, uh, things like that affected by the storm last night, even at this hour. Branches on the roadway, that all that kind of stuff. But let's check on the road. And very heavy traffic for me coming in today. I don't know why it's so busy. Same, it's the same. Uh, when I was going down to I-10, uh, there was a lot more traffic this morning than usual. So just keep that in mind when you're out there. And yes, debris on the roadway is possible. Drive a little bit less than the speed limit today, just so you know where you are and what's on the road and look ahead of you so you get to work safely. All right, this is one accident here on 151. Uh, uh, eastbound at Westover Hills is just about clear. It looks like Wrecker was on scene and has now towed that vehicle out of the way. Just please be careful because that vehicle spun out on mud on the main lanes, just that debris that we we're talking about. So please be careful when heading that direction. All right, taking a look at the trans guide. 10 at Days of Allah looking very good right now. Uh, 10 at Calabra Road. Very little cars on the roadway there. What else do we have here? 10 West at Loop 1604 in the northwest side looking very good. And uh, 1604 at Hausman looking even better. Thank you, Nick. I tried to take my own advice last night, Mike, and pull the truck in the garage. The truck is a little too long to uh -oh. fit in the garage, so I had to sit out the hail, move the truck back out, then go to bed. There's, it was almost like two different types of hail. One was 
covered the ground mm -hmm. almost like snow and the other was the very large like the one snow. behind you yeah like the one behind me which uh you know is about a good say what is that almost a tennis ball a tennis size ball. roughly and at one point you know with all the limbs down leaves ripped off the trees some of that was from hail and also some of the wind and i was just looking at the weather service and last night at one point winds were about 37 miles per hour out at the airport and I believe there was one wind gust of just over 50 miles per hour out there at the airport so yeah a lot of hail around as expected uh, we were talking about that how large hail was going to be one of the biggest threats now 68 degrees here in town 66 ball verde and low 60s in the hill country and we don't have anything showing up on radar again the last gasp of all these storms was right there around Zavala County earlier this morning and I, as I mentioned that did produce some severe weather that was then canceled that severe thunderstorm warning earlier this morning and obviously everything is on out of here getting on out of here now going back in time and just taking a look all of these storms we kept saying how it was going to be from about San Antonio up to the northeast now we did obviously have a few pretty good cells that moved through the hill country and right there last evening when those uh, big, big thunderstorm cells moved on through, obviously knocked out some power, still have some power outages. And here is the culprit, this low, which is spinning right there around western Arkansas. And you get this northwesterly flow and it throws these bits of energy on through here. And they can obviously be very, very potent. And once again this afternoon, the atmosphere is going to be volatile and we're going to get some bits of energy wrapping around on the backside of that low. And so that's why we have more thunderstorms in the forecast, especially now it's shifted off to the west. So here's the uh, rapid update computer model. And this one throughout the rest of today doesn't show much. I think we keep a lot of clouds around today. Then we get into once again dinner time and get a couple of cells trying to develop out here in the hill country and those will continue to work its way on through. Now this model has some pretty good clusters trying to develop in the wee hours tomorrow morning right on top of San Antonio in the metropolitan area and then working the way down to the south. This is the only model that does that different model has this pretty much the same solution off to the west with some of these uh, thunderstorms developing late in the afternoon into dinner time and working its way on through but not as strong of a cluster of storms by tomorrow morning. So that's one of those. That's why we look at all sorts of different computer models. Now there will be obviously that chance for uh, thunderstorms again, basically going with western half of our viewing area later on late this afternoon and uh, tonight 83 degrees at noon, mostly cloudy skies. Some sunshine peeking on through there, then 90 again for a high temperature. A couple of showers and thunderstorms primarily to the west, and we'll just have to keep an eye on things overnight and early tomorrow morning, whether those rogue cells of storms continue to uh, develop, and that would be in the early, early morning hours about this time tomorrow or even a little bit earlier than that, then some sunshine, and still the weekend is shaping up nicely. The whole overall weather pattern is going to kind of change that low, I was talking about over Arkansas that's been kind of the culprit for this is finally going to get on out of here and that's going to give us uh, more sunshine. All right, so you promise we are going to have a nice weekend. Yeah, the weekend is, is looking pretty nice around here. Okay, we're going to hold you to that. We are. No pressure, Mike. Mm. Yep. 453, uh, 68 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, the latest on another high profile movie that's now available and a surprise for Harry Potter fans, courtesy of the new HBO Max. will decide what I do next. A message of hope from the high note, one of the more high-profile movies out this week. Tracy Ellis Ross plays an aging music star who wants to stay in the game. And she says the message of the film is go for it. No matter where you are in your life, no matter your circumstances, no matter your age, no matter your stage, no matter your phase, it is never too late to go for your dreams. I know everyone is happy with me doing the same show every night. What if there's something more? The High Note is available Friday for online rental. You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? A magical surprise for the launch of HBO Max. All eight Harry Potter films are on the streaming service. The films weren't originally part of the plan as they were licensed to NBC Universal through 2025. Many remembering playwright and AIDS activist Larry Kramer, best known for his play The Normal Heart. Elton John said in a statement, we have lost a giant of a man who stood up for gay rights like a warrior. Lin-Manuel Miranda writes on Twitter that Kramer was an extraordinary writer. Rosie O'Donnell called him an American hero. Kramer was diagnosed with HIV in 1989. He died of pneumonia. Larry Kramer was 84. And Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Gladys Knight with a birthday today. She's 76. While Oscar-nominated actress Carrie Mulligan is 35. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News.
Los Angeles. Don't know if you know this, but a lot, and a lot of people don't. Mike Ostrich was originally one of the pips with Gladys Knight. I did not know that. It's true. This is news yeah, to me. we have known him a long time. We have more coming up today on GMSA at nine. No, we won't. Right now, 457, 68 degrees. I'm gonna call him Pippi Ostrich now. We already did. We did. <clears throat> Still heading our next half hour, San Antonio Water Park, scrambling to get everything ready to reopen. This after the governor said they can get back to business starting tomorrow. And Google being accused of tracking Android user locations without their knowledge. Details ahead in Tech Bytes. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Lots and lots of lightning lighting up the night sky as storms blew through the area last night, bringing hail and heavy rain along with it. We have some of your pictures. Plus, San Antonio Water Parks getting ready for visitors for the first time after getting the go ahead to open up starting tomorrow. And if you're wondering, are we done with the storms? Mike Osterhage has the answer, and you might just be surprised. Good morning, everybody. It is now Thursday. It's May 28th. Thanks for being with us this morning. Unfortunately, we could get another round of those storms later on today. Mike, what's going on? Yeah, it's still that the same basic weather pattern that we have that's bringing these uh, very potent disturbances, impulses on through here. And this time it's going to be mainly in our western counties. So get that shown in just a couple of minutes. So temperatures right now are pretty pleasant. This is kind of the calm after the storms last night and before anything pops up later on today. We are a little bit below normal. Humidity is OK and uh, dew points at 66. So that, that's not bad out there. No rain is being picked up in the area as of right now. We had some leftover storms well off to the west and southwest around Zavala County earlier this morning and that had prompted some uh, severe thunderstorm warnings, but those were canceled and everything again is moving on out of here. Maybe a few uh, leftover storms well down around Laredo this morning. And like I said, though, we still have the same weather pattern in place. Now we've got 50s up there. Kerrville 59, 63 Bernie stage 67 at Randolph as of right now. Mold is high, but it dropped down significantly at uh, compared to the previous days. As far as the rest of today, mostly cloudy, pleasant, mostly cloudy throughout the day. A couple of uh, peaks of sunshine here and there. Some storms developing to the west. Some of those may kind of move in as far east as San Antonio, and some could be on the strong to severe side. Once again, especially further out to the west. Then after that, tomorrow afternoon and uh, going into the weekend, we will have more sunshine mixed in with the clouds. And actually, it's going to be fairly pleasant. Not too hot. Temperatures are going to be held very close to normal reading going into the weekend, which is about 90 for a high temperature. We do have that slight risk for severe weather. Again, large hail and high winds are going to be the biggest threats, and that is just about from, say, the Hondo off to the west, going into the hill country, and then the rest of us have the marginal risk for a couple of strong to severe storms, and it's going to be late tonight in the wee hours of tomorrow morning. More of the weekend forecast coming up. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Nick Salis. Anything going on yet, sir? Not right now, Mike. Things are looking good. A lot of green on the screen. If you're headed to work right now, expect a smooth ride. However, there still could be some debris on the roadway. Roadway still can be slick. We had an accident this morning ready because of debris on the roadway. Uh, just please be careful. Watch that speed limit and wear your seatbelt. Make sure you're safe at all times because we want you getting to work safely. All right, take a look at these drive times. If you're 1604 westbound from US 281 to I-10, it's only six minutes. And if you're on 281 southbound from Bolverde to 1604, five minutes to really good times there. Taking a look at the trans guy, 35 at Brooklyn, looking good right now. 35 at San Marcos, one car, maybe two on the roadway, so things looking very smooth there. And 10 at Callahan East, looking great. All right, hope everyone has a wonderful morning. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. This morning, a man in serious condition after being shot three times last night. It happened on the east side, the 100 block of Sanders Street. Sarah Costa joins us live with what police are saying about the suspect. Sarah? Good morning, Mark and Leslie. Police continue to search for that shooter. They say that he was wearing a black hoodie when he shot multiple times at a man that was standing in front of a house on the east side. They say they got this call around 1045 last night to the 100 block of Sanders, which is near Iowa and Pine Street on the east side. The man who was shot was in his 20s. He was visiting the home on Sanders, standing outside in front of the house. That's when police say the shooter shot at the man and the home multiple times. The victim was shot three times and a parked car in front was also hit. That man was that was shot was in his 20s. He was taken to Bamsey in serious condition with three gunshot wounds. 
Police say they are still looking for that shooter. Like I said earlier, who was wearing a black hoodie, and they say they are still investigating the cause of the shooting. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. New information on a wrong way driver killed in Converse. Police are saying the man believed to have crashed into oncoming traffic is 26-year-old Brett Alexander Wiseman. He is from Schertz. The crash happened earlier this week on FM 1516 near Ben Zingelman Road. Witnesses told police that Wiseman crossed into oncoming traffic to try to get around slower vehicles, but ended up crashing into a car head on. The three victims in that car were taken to the hospital. They are reported to be okay. Family members now releasing photos of Miranda Malowski. She was found stabbed after jumping from a moving vehicle on Cree Trail over the weekend. The mother of three trying to become a corrections officer with the state and had graduated from the academy just days before her death. Bear County deputies say Michael Gonzalez, who has children with Malowski, is accused in her death. San Antonio water theme parks are scurrying to get the grounds ready for reopening after the governor announced they can do so starting tomorrow. Many of them have set their eyes on a mid-June date. Others are still working to finalize a plan. James Kenney, vice president of Splashtown, says they have a lot of painting and hiring to do. Some 150 positions will be available this summer. Kenny says the most challenging thing is trying to figure out the social distancing guidelines. I'm still frantically ordering face masks and sanitizer and sanitizer stations, uh, signage for COVID protocol. Uh, there's just a lot of uh, new things that we've got to do to, to get ready this year. Because parks can only operate at 25% capacity, they urge customers to buy tickets ahead of time to ensure entry. For information on when other water parks will reopen, just head on over to KSAT.com. South said ISD, or rather South Side ISD seniors were set to video their entrances at the school's auditorium for their virtual graduation. But those plans are now on hold. Change in plans happened after a student came forward with ex concerns of exposure to COVID-19. Now the district tells KSAT they don't know how many students or staff may have been exposed, but they're assessing the situation. It's still kind of a confusing scenario. One senior who didn't want to go on camera says delaying the ceremony is the right decision. It's not just about us right now. We have to think of our, our neighbors. We have to think of others. So this is a stepping stone. This is a, a means to an end for this chapter, but it's not the end of the book. All right, so the ceremony will now take place June 9th through the 11th at Southside High School. 507, 68 degrees. Still ahead, a first look at how Samsung's new debit card program works. And up next, in the midst of the pandemic, a local woman using her time at home to capture the moments of those around her through pictures. Stick around. You don't want to miss her message of strength. And taking outside with live cam for all of you who submitted your video and your pictures of damage from the severe weather last night. We thank you. It really helps us tell the story. As families were stuck at home in the Alamo City due to COVID-19, one woman put her photography hobby to good use. Sarah Costa spoke with the local porch photographer who says photographing her neighbors turned into a form of therapy. Sarah? Good morning, Mark and Leslie. Now, Caitlin Cox works for a nonprofit full time, but when her hours got cut short because of the COVID-19 pandemic, she began to focus more on her photography hobby. She says she didn't realize what that hobby would turn into. Caitlin Cox is not a full-time photographer, nor considers herself a professional, but knew it was something she wanted to do during quarantine. I thought it was just such a cool concept. While everyone is home and not leaving their houses, what a cool idea just to capture what everyone's doing while stuck you know, with their family. So she put out a note on her Hollywood Park next door app asking if any of her neighbors wanted porch photos. The response was overwhelming. She says she only charges 15 to 20 dollars because it's more about the experience. Well, I really didn't do it to make money off of it. Um, I put a lot of time and energy into it, but more because it's still just something that is exciting to me. She says just being able to get out of her house and interact with people has been helping her stay sane and believes it's also therapeutic for the families she photographs. You get to see a sense of relief when we were, you know, when I'd pull up and people were able to come outside and just interact with another person. Maybe they hadn't left the house or they've been at home with their kids or their spouse without anything but Zoom calls and phone calls uh, before that. Her favorite photographs are the candid ones. You could tell they were all getting on each other's nerves and the kids were just dumping confetti down over their heads. And once they thought the camera was off and I kept capturing pictures, but 
that's when the real, you know, chaos started to happen. Cox says she hopes the families can share these photos years later to remind themselves what they went through and what we can overcome. There are funny moments and there are candid moments, but then they're also really special because this will be something that's in the history books and they'll have a way to remember it. Something for the history books. Caitlin and I were talking about how now we look back at World War II era photos and love to see those moments about what um, those generations were going through. And she says she hopes people will do the same with her porch photos. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. That was an incredibly touching story. Yeah, she's captured some special moments, no doubt. Sarah, thank you. 513, 68 degrees. Still ahead, we're going to tell you how Hollywood actor Tom Hanks is literally giving back when it comes to helping others combat coronavirus. And at least one state suing Google over allegations the company illegally tracked Android users' locations without their consent. It's starting to happen every day. People are surprising themselves. The moment they realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Don't use if allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor right away about signs of inflamed blood vessels, such as rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and before stopping any asthma medicines, including oral steroids. Do more with less asthma. Talk to your doctor about Dupixent. Google's being accused of tracking Android users without their consent. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Arizona is suing Google. The state claims the company tracked Android users' locations without their consent and that the tracking took place even when the feature was manually turned off. Google claims its products have robust location data controls. And Samsung is out with new details about its upcoming debit card program. It's called Samsung Money, and it will link directly with existing Samsung Pay app accounts. Samsung says there will be no account fees. The card will be available this summer. A Pennsylvania father and daughter are using the family ring doorbell camera to keep in touch while she's away at school. Hey, Em, it's drizzling a little here. Hey, Em. Hey, Em, got $9 off at Rite Aid. Hey, Em. The daughter downloaded the app to sort of snoop on her folks since her dad found out he's been saying hi. Those are your tech bites. We need to get an update on the weather, and that is coming up. I wonder how traffic is shaping <laughs> up. Let's check in with Nick. That's yeah, looking great right now. Things are very smooth out there. If you're heading to work right now, expect a smooth ride. Right. It just could be a little wet out there in the roadway still, so please be careful. Watch your speed and watch for debris on the roadway. Uh, let's take a look outside, shall we? 35 in Brooklyn looking good. 35 in San Marcos looking even better. What else do we have here? Uh, 10 at Callahan East. Things are just smooth all around the city right now, which is a good sign. Uh, 35 at Pine. Traffic flowing very great. And what else? One more. Let's see, 10 at Days of Allah looking smooth. As we bring Mike in, Nick, I know when you walked in the newsroom this morning, you were talking about you hadn't seen an electrical storm like this no, I in a long time. No, it looked it looked crazy. It and you're far northwest, right? Like far, yeah, in the Halotus area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I couldn't find my keys to put my <laughs> truck in the garage. At all the times I couldn't find my keys, I couldn't find them. I was blaming everybody. <laughs> I couldn't believe some of the videos that were posted in the pictures. It, yeah. It was a light show. And the hail on top of that and the wind, as I mentioned, uh, one reports uh, wind gust out of the airport about 8, 8.30 last night as the one storm moved on through here. It was about 35, 40 miles per hour and then gust of 53 miles per hour. And there was also at one point uh, last evening, right about uh, 7 o'clock or so, I believe it was, there was a, a tornado warning that was issued and radar indicated potential tornado up around Gillespie County moving into Kendall County. And this is out there around Hondo and talk about the light show. Wow, a lot of folks took pictures. Hopefully do it if make sure 
Anytime there's thunderstorms, you do it inside. Do not go outside at all in thunderstorms. 63 Bandera, same thing, uh, Bernie Stage 69 up the road in Canyon Lake. And all the rain, we've got a little bit of some leftover thunderstorms down there around uh, Laredo, but everything has moved on out of here for the time being. And, of course, those big thunderstorms as they moved on through here, and boy, they were packing a punch coming right down. And pretty much as all the computer models indicated, a couple of them were a little uh, further off to the west, but this was definitely in that um, the storm prediction center area that had the slight to even enhanced risk for uh, severe weather last night. The culprit is this low right there spinning about northwestern Arkansas and you get in this northwesterly flow on the backside of it and it gets these little bits of energy coming on through here. The atmosphere is fairly volatile and that's what prompted those those storms last night. And then also later on today, we're going to have the same situation or a similar situation, I should say, but this time basically off to the west. So computer model rapid update model. This one uh, doesn't really have much going on throughout the rest of today, but then or the rest of the morning or early afternoon, then it's got more thunderstorms developing get about dinner time into the early evening hours, but this time off to the west and those will continue on into the evening hours. And this model does have a couple of pretty good cells developing in the wee hours tomorrow morning, and that's going to be moving on through here. So we could see uh, another round of some very large hail and very high winds and a good light show again, then that will all continue to move on out again. That's the rapid update model, different computer model, and it's got about the same same situation where these storms are going to be developing out to the west primarily in the afternoon hours and then continuing to work their way on through. But this one does not have quite as big of a cell trying to move through the metropolitan area earlier tomorrow morning and then it gets everything on out of here. Now, as far as the severe threat, all of the area is under a severe threat for tonight, but the focus is going to be out to the west. So from about, say, Hondo out to the west and northwest, that's the slight risk for severe weather. And high winds and large hail are going to be the biggest threats with this. And you might have some brief heavy downpours, of course, and a very good light show, but the severe threats are the winds and the hail mainly. It could be a small tornado spin up. There's always that possibility, although not very likely. 83 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. Going to see more clouds, I think, than sunshine today. Temperature is going to be right at normal again, mostly cloudy. A couple of storms mainly to the west and northwest late this afternoon, dinner time, and then throughout the evening hours, and perhaps even overnight into the early morning hours of tomorrow. Then we'll see some sunshine. The nice thing, temperatures are going to be almost exactly normal for highs and lows all the way through the weekend first part of next week and we should have more sunshine around here with clouds mixed in over the weekend another chance of rain would be right now on monday but again for this evening gotta be on the lookout especially to the west well we've seen to squeeze a whole spring severe weather season into a span of it's about a, a week days, yeah. no no kid yeah that it, it's been rough around here the past couple of weeks. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 522, 68 degrees. Coming up next in your morning spotlight, how actor Tom Hanks is going the extra mile to help those dealing with coronavirus following his own recovery. Lottery numbers real quick. Pick three, 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 seven, fireball four, daily four, five, one, two, one, fireball four. And cash five numbers, 13, 19, 25, 28, 34. Lotto numbers, one, two, 13, 37, 44, 45. And Powerball numbers, 38, 58, 59, 64, 68, with a Powerball of 21 and a power play of three. Exactly, 526 Entertainment News Now, including a Tom Hanks COVID-19 update. And a must for music fans. Here's CNN's David Daniel with your Hollywood Minute. Now that Tom Hanks no longer has the coronavirus, he's giving back, literally. Hanks shared photos on Instagram indicating he's donating plasma to help others with the virus. Plasma from people like Hanks who've recovered from COVID-19 may have antibodies that could potentially help those fighting the illness. These kids have put more time into spelling by the time they're 13 than most of us put into anything our entire lives. Indian American students have won the Scripps National Spelling Bee for the past 12 years. The Netflix documentary Spelling the Dream looks at four students competing for that prize, what drives them, and the costs of their dreams. The film debuts June 3rd. The legendary In Excess Wembley Arena show Live Baby Live is coming home as you've never seen it before. 
The concert film has been restored from the 35mm negative to 4K Ultra HD, with more than 20 times greater resolution than the original DVD release. It's available on disc and digital download June 26th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Wow, remember an excess? Oh, yes. That takes us back, doesn't it? Yes, and it's good to see Tom Hanks doing so well. Agreed, and uh, continue to do great things as, yes. a, as a person. 527, 68 degrees. Coming up in our next half hour, the United States has officially reached that grim milestone when it comes to the coronavirus. More of what's being done to slow the spread of infection. Greenskeepers at Brackenridge Golf Course have a lot of uh, a long to-do list, and all has been had to be done before morning tea time. We'll take a look at what goes into getting everything ready. Uh, it's a return of our segment while you were sleeping. So glad. Good morning. It is Thursday, May 28th. Well, hopefully your alarm went off this morning as it was supposed to, and you have electricity this morning after last night's big giant storms that rolled through the area. Yeah, some of you don't have power this morning. We're continuing to attract that. But the big question this morning is, Mike, can we be done with the storms? And you have an answer for us. No. Uh, temporarily, yes, we are. Everything has moved on out of here. We don't have any more rain in the air. A couple of maybe leftover showers down around uh, Laredo as of right now. Things have definitely settled down after, I mean, Wind gusts reported at the airport uh, last night about 8, 8.30, 53 miles per hour. Uh, hail, tennis ball sized in a lot of places, even some baseball sized hail, and what a light show. And we might see more, especially off to the west. So 68 degrees in town. Same thing at Stinson, 67 at Randolph. We're actually slightly below normal. Normal low temperature right now is 70. And the humidity is, once again, fairly pleasant. Mold, which is still high, but it came down significantly. Uh, yesterday it was up in the, the five digits so it, or excuse me the day before yesterday was up in the five digits we're going to be up to 80 today at noon we're going to see a lot of clouds today a little bit of sunshine mixed on in there 88 for a high temperature and then we're going to see a few storms developing out to the west in probably about the same timing late in the afternoon dinner time then going into the evening hours and once again some of those may be on the strong to severe side the whole area is under the marginal risk for severe storms and then that gets bumped up right about say hondo and then going out to the west and to the northwest up to the uh, slight risk for severe weather large hail again and high winds are going to be the biggest threats and obviously with these storms we're going to have a very good light show an isolated small tornado spinning up is a possibility, although not very likely. After this, it looks like the entire weather pattern is going to be changing somewhat. We'll talk about that and take a look ahead to the weekend coming up. Time saver traffic. Here is Officer Nick Solise. What's going on, Nick? Hey, good right now on the main lane How about now? It, give it like six or seven seconds to catch up. <laughs> there you go. I think I'm good now. Okay, not a lot going on right now in the main lanes of the city, but we do have an accident on Thousand Oaks Drive at Preston Hollow Drive. It looks like a one vehicle accident slammed into a light pole, and, and it just means the roadways are dangerous and still slick a little bit in places around the city. So please be careful and watch your speed everywhere you go and look for that debris and make sure you wear that seat belt. Uh, but this is the accident we're working on right now. Taking a look at some drive times, if you're 35 southbound from the city of New Braunfels to 1604, it's 11 minutes. And if you're uh, 35 southbound from 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes, so still really good times there. Taking a look outside, 10 at Days of Vala looking good right now. Not too much going on. 10 in Calabria, uh, traffic is smooth there. And let's do one more here. 10 west, 1604 in the northwest side, looking great. All right, everyone, hope you have a great morning. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Well, new this morning, fire officials say lightning is likely the cause of a fire that burned part of a home on the north side. Thankfully, the home on Alora Avenue was still under construction, so no lives, no one lives there yet. Just after 10 last night, firefighters say the lightning went through the roof that caused a fire that smoldered for some time before fire crews arrived. No one was hurt, as we said. And they tell us damage is estimated to be at about $10,000. All right, here's a look at the latest power outages, courtesy of CPS Energy. There's still several people without power this morning, as we mentioned, just over 3,000 to be exact. To track the latest outages, just go to ksat.com. We have a link to the map. The coronavirus has now killed more than 100,000 people here in the U.S. As CNN's Reed Binion reports, the heartbreak from those deaths continues as does the economic hardship triggered by the pandemic.
A grim milestone in the coronavirus pandemic reported. U.S. deaths now topping 100,000, according to Johns Hopkins University. Each death impacting untold numbers of loved ones, co-workers, and acquaintances. The pandemic also continuing to take a toll on businesses and workers. Aerospace giant Boeing laying off more than 6,700 employees Wednesday. Marriott International citing fallout from the pandemic as it warns of a significant number of layoffs later this year. Other businesses banding together to raise awareness. Lights going dark briefly in Times Square to symbolize what organizers say is the effect of insurers denying businesses coverage for coronavirus-related losses. Still other businesses forging ahead. One of them, Walt Disney World, proposing reopening several attractions, including the Magic Kingdom, in July. All this as the nation's top infectious disease expert updates the timeline regarding vaccine development. I still think that we have a good chance, if all the things fall in the right place, that we might have a vaccine that would be deployable by the, uh, by the end of the year. I'm Reed Binion reporting. Also making headlines, Aeromexico says it's completed its longest flight in the country's aviation history. That's after transporting medical supplies to China. According to the statement, the flight took off from Mexico City, stopped in Narita, Japan, before continuing its path to China. The Boeing 787 Dreamliner flew for over 8,700 miles before finally returning to Mexico City. Along with their flights to Shanghai, the airline has completed 100 mission trips, rather missions, to some transport medical supplies to 14 countries. Well, as if coronavirus and a deadly cyclone were not enough, India is dealing with one of the worst locust attacks in decades. Swarms of locusts have ravaged parts of western India, damaging crops and threatening its food security. States are trying to use chemical sprays to get rid of them. India typically experiences locusts from May through June, but this year's swarms are particularly bad. Warmer than usual waters fueled heavy amounts of rain in areas where desert locust breeding grow. Their migration has led to one of India's worst attacks in 25 years. All right, listen to this. In San Diego, authorities say a man broke into a bank to use a microwave for his hot pocket last night. Police were called to a Wells Fargo bank, found a broken window near the drive through They say surveillance cameras captured the man inside a break room using the microwave. As officers arrested the man, he said it was totally worth breaking to the bank to heat up his hot pocket for dinner. Okay, then. 536, 68 degrees. Still ahead, doctors are getting a closer look at how COVID-19 affects the brain. We'll take a look at the new research. You probably don't need reminding of how the coronavirus brought life as we know it to a grinding halt. While everyone was quarantining, we put the brakes on our series known as While You Were Sleeping. But just like a lot of things we enjoy, it's back now. This time around, we take a look at what happens overnight to make sure it's a good day on the golf course. It's a race against time from the start of their shift. Keepers at the Brackenridge Park Golf Course have a long to-do list, all to be done before morning tea time. As you'll see just ahead, sand traps aren't the only hazards they face on the course. And back outside with live cam, waking up on your Thursday morning, starting your day with GMSA. Another look at time saver traffic coming up with Officer Nick Solis of the SAPD. 540, welcome back to GMSA, the unofficial sport of American presidents. Also a great pastime for many other people. Whole game of golf depends uh, a lot on those who spend time on the course overnight. Katrina Weber got a look at their technique before the coronavirus even struck. So while you won't see any masks or social distancing, you can see the story. It's this week's While You Were Sleeping. <laughs> With the start of their engines, the race is on. This team is out to beat the clock to make sure the greens and everything in between at the Brackenridge Park Golf Course are good to go. They know the course pretty good. They know exactly what they're going to do, what mowing pattern they're going to mow that day. In order to outpace early morning golfers, Robert Cano and his crew get an even earlier start. Along with grooming the grass, they add to the challenge of the game, repositioning all 18 holes every day. In the dark, they have to watch out for hazards and not just sand traps. Usually a lot of skunks out here, uh, skunks, mainly raccoons, possums. They're actually part of the package that comes with this historic oasis in the center of the city. Brackenridge is part of the Alamo City Golf Trail, 
the oldest public 18-hole course in Texas. Today's technology, though, often comes into play here. If I want to water something, I could just pull my phone out and test a sprinkler, or if that green needs water, I could water it with my phone. Still, there's a lot of manpower at work all trained professionals. It definitely takes a certain kind of person to make the cut as a greenskeeper. This job involves a lot of science, but they also have to have a bit of an artistic eye. You gotta have a passion for it, and there's a lot of ins and outs to it. It's not just a matter of mowing and watering and cutting grass. But if all goes as planned, they're able to do that and more, even before the sun opens its eyes. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. No, it's good to have it back. I miss that series. And some beautiful photography in there. Thank you, Tim Stewart. 542, 68 degrees. Coming up next, a look at new research that doctors are performing to try to better understand how coronavirus can affect the brain. Those sick with COVID-19 have difficulty breathing, they have kidney problems, sometimes even develop blood clots. But doctors are now trying to understand how the coronavirus can affect the brain. Stephanie Cerner reports on the research now taking place. While any illness can cause you to feel tired, disoriented, and just not yourself, some people may develop a more serious type of confused state called delirium. Delirium is when a patient suddenly has a change in mental function where it may be hard to think, sleep, or maintain a level of consciousness. While it is more common in older adults, anybody of any age can experience it. So far, according to a study in the Journal of the American Medical Association Neurology, published in April, up to 30% of people of all ages hospitalized with COVID-19 developed delirium. In some cases, people can lose touch with reality and their personalities can change. Most often, this can be temporary, but in some cases, delirium can have long-lasting effects such as depression, chronic fatigue, and post-traumatic stress disorder. The American Delirium Society says that those who develop delirium are more likely to stay in the hospital longer and suffer complications than those who don't. While delirium is not well understood, Researchers suggest that inflammation triggered by COVID-19 may affect the brain directly. Doctors also say that just being in the hospital in an unfamiliar environment can trigger this as well. Doctors are on the lookout for symptoms of delirium in COVID-19, and if recognized early, it can be treated so that long-term effects can be avoided. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. General Electric getting out of the light bulb business. It's selling its light bulb business to home automation company called Savant Systems. GE says it traces its history all the way back to Thomas Edison and the light bulb. Nissan is talking about getting smaller as demand for cars go down during the pandemic. It is the last, it, in its last fiscal year, sales of Nissan vehicles were down 13%. The automaker is promising a plan focused on cutting costs, streamlining development, and building up cash reserves. American Airlines says it needs to make plans to be a smaller airline for the foreseeable future. The company plans to cut management and administrative staff by 30 percent. That adds to up about 5,000 people. The plan mirrors one announced by United Airlines earlier this month. Let's check on the roadways, find out if there are any new problem spots to be aware of. Nick? Yeah, we have two accidents on the northeast side. First one being here on the 7,000 block of Gibbs Sprawl Road near the intersection of Walsham Road. It looks like it's a two vehicle accident and uh, records are on scene there. So just keep that in mind if you are heading down that way. Still working here at Thousand Oaks at Preston Hollow Drive. One vehicle accident that hit the light pole. That one should be getting cleared up pretty soon. All right, let's take a look at the trans guide. 1604 and Hausman looking good right now. Traffic flowing very smoothly 37 and fair avenue on the southeast side looking great and uh, four tenant san pedro flowing smoothly over there by the airport thank you nick and mike wants to tell us about a kitten yes so over the uh the shelters out there the humane society this Aww. young kitten was thrown out of a moving car what no and yeah it is now recovering the six week old six week old siamese kitten was named who Felix. would do that i <laughs> after he was given a second opportunity at <laughs> life. That's after police officers took him to a shelter, the shelter earlier this month. He was quickly examined and treated for an eye infection and lung crackle. Surprisingly, he suffered no broken bones. 
It's going to take some time for Felix to fully recover and be ready for adoption. And you're invited to support pets like Felix by donating to the Humane Society Emergency Fund. Every donation helps pets get the care they need. And to learn more, just go to the website. You can also donate needed items via the blue bin located outside the shelter's front door, as well as the Amazon wish list. A couple of clicks and you can donate. But look at how adorable. I predict Felix will find a home. And those beautiful blue eyes. It's a great looking cat. 4004 Fredericksburg Road, 226 for more information. What a sweet baby. Yes, and thank you very much to the uh, San Antonio Humane Society and all the shelters for taking in all these pets. So don't forget, you know, they've got all the, the different adoption procedures all set up out there. So uh, you can do a lot of it, take care of it online. So calm after the storm, if you will. Uh, we had uh, about an inch and a quarter of rain out there at the airport. 68 degrees right now, low 60s in parts of the hill country. And this is a look at some of the rainfall estimates on radar. And again, like I said, about an inch and a quarter at the airport as these storms move through. Now this goes back 24 hours, but again, the majority of this was last night, um, dinner time up through roughly uh, midnight or so. And we had those very heavy pockets of storms and they moved from northwest down to the southeast as expected because that's the flow that we're in in the atmosphere as of right now. A lot of hail, uh, some of it uh, about tennis ball, almost baseball sized hail. This is the, the culprit. There's that low spinning right there around Oklahoma, uh, northwestern Arkansas, and it's taking little bits of energy and throwing them down in our direction. And so as the afternoons heat up, the atmosphere becomes more unstable, more volatile, and we get those disturbances moving on through. So two different computer models I want to show here, and because there are slight little differences with these. First of all, the rapid update model. Nothing going on really throughout most of the day, and then by late afternoon, some of these cells are going to try and uh, develop out there and there is the chance that they could become severe again. This model does have a fairly decent cell trying to develop right on top of the metropolitan area in the wee hours tomorrow morning and then moving on through here. So that'll be something that we have to watch because that's what sometimes a lot of these systems do is these um, thunderstorm clusters get kind of a mind of their own, if you will, and become little small weather systems and they last all night long. So that's what we have to watch out for and that's what the rapid update model is indicating. This computer model has about the same situation where late in the afternoon we're going to be seeing some of the thunderstorm cells developing, working their way down to the uh, south. And it does have even a couple of them as far east as uh, San Antonio and the metropolitan area, but it doesn't have quite the intense cell moving on through here. So we just have to be on the lookout overnight for some of those heavier thunderstorm cells to hold together into tomorrow morning. Everybody has the marginal risk for a couple of uh, strong to severe storms. Again, large hail and high winds are going to be the biggest threats. And like last night, there was a tornado warning that was issued for radar indicated just because some circulation in the atmosphere around Gillespie County into Kendall County. So that's always an outside chance with these systems. Now, the threat for severe weather does go up from about Hondo off to the west, Rock Springs, Uvalde, Del Rio, Eagle Pass. And uh, that's again about a two on the scale of uh, one to five, not as intense as last night, but we'll still have to be on the lookout for that. There's the low parked over Arkansas that will finally sort of fizzle on out. So that's going to change the whole weather pattern. So we're not going to be into what we've had the past couple of days with this very strong northwesterly flow with these little disturbances around here. The high is going to start to build on in and it's going to give us a lot of sunshine. It's not going to be extreme heat though. So that's on the, the Pot, the positive side, I guess you could say with this, because a lot of times when those highs move on in there, they sit on top of us and really heat things up. But as of right now, temperatures are going to be fairly consistent right about normal all the way through the weekend. 83 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature today up to 90. We will have a few of those showers and thunderstorms developing to the west and northwest late this afternoon and then going into tonight. Some could be on the strong to severe side Again, large hail and high winds are definitely the biggest threats once again. Tomorrow uh, we'll be on the lookout for leftover rain in the morning and then start to clear out somewhat and we'll have a uh, nice mix of sun and clouds all the way through the weekend. Normal high temperatures, low temperatures very close to normal as well. 90, 70 respectively. And the next chance of rain right now looks like it's going to be on Monday. Well, that sunrise out there is looking nice so far. We just yeah. get things started. Yep, but Thanks, this man. is the calm before another, another round, round of storms. Yep. 
Thank you for the heads up once again. 553, 68 degrees. Coming up next, some brand new cheetah cubs at the Smithsonian's National Zoo finally have names. We'll tell you what they are. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, 337, Fireball 4. Daily four numbers, 5121, Fireball 4. And your cash five numbers, 13, 19, 25, 28, 34. Lotto, 1, 2, 13, 37, 44, 45. Powerball, 38, 58, 59, 64, 68, 21 was the Powerball Power Play Free. Some brand new cubs at uh, the Smithsonian's National Zoo in Washington, D.C. Finally have names. The zoo recently asked the public to help name the litter of four cheetah cubs. Three boys and one girl were welcomed to the zoo back in April. More than 30,000 votes were submitted, and now we know the winning names. One of the cubs is called Arendi, named after a South African cheetah reserve. His brothers are named Jabari and Hassani. Finally, the only girl was given the name Amabala, which appropriately means spots. They are cute. For less than three minutes still right now, just ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, lots of hail, lots of lightning. Check back in with Mike Ostrich about last night's latest round of severe weather here in South Texas. More of your video and pictures, too. We've had tons of it coming into our newsroom overnight. And we'll check in with Officer Nick Solis about time saver traffic as folks are hitting the roads up and at them on this Thursday morning. You're watching GMSA. Lightning strikes from last night's severe weather causing firefighters to respond to several calls last night. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. Coming up, we show you some of that damage from one of those fires. And live cam giving us a look outside. As we've been saying all morning, it's calm after the storm. But here's the thing. More storms could form later on this afternoon. Mike Osterhage has your forecast. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Thursday, May 28th. Enough already. No kidding. And this one, I know the first one we had, Mike, a couple nights ago, there was the tornado, a lot of winds, but the hail from last night. There was also a tornado warning that was issued at one point last night in Southern Gillespie County, Northern uh, Kendall County. Up near Ra Fredericksburg. Yeah, radar indicated uh, the kind of winds trying to, to rotate around a little bit. But yeah, some of the hail... Uh, Tennis ball, ball, baseball size, ground covered in small pea-sized hail as well. We are in the same basic uh, situation as yesterday. This time, though, instead of being further, you know, leaning to the northeast, it's kind of leaning more toward the west. I'll show you that in a second. Right now, it's a nice, pleasant morning. I mean, temperatures are actually a little bit below normal again. 60s hill country, mid-60s in and around the metropolitan area, a couple of 70s out there. Mold still is very high, but it dropped down considerably from the previous day's reading when it was in five digits. Now, throughout the rest of today, Temperatures will, we're going to keep a lot of clouds around here. Temperatures will be making it up into the uh, about uh, low 80s by noon, and then we'll top off right around the mid to upper 80s later on today. Again, a lot of cloud cover, and so that may actually fluctuate temperatures slightly. Also this afternoon, then, we're going to start to see a few of those thunderstorms developing primarily out to the west, and then they'll continue to kind of build up a little bit more going into the evening hours. And as far as the severe threat, all of the area is under a marginal risk. That's a scale of one to five. That'd be a number one. Number two is the uh, yellow area. That's the slight risk for severe storms, about Hondo off to the west and to the northwest, all the way over toward the uh, Rio Grande Valley. Once again, large hail and high winds are going to be the biggest threats. At one point, uh, last night, about 8.30 or so, out of the airport, reported a wind gust of 53 miles per hour. And, of course, we had that light show on top of all that hail. So going to be dealing with some more of that tonight. Then things are finally going to be changing. Details on the weekend coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. And anything, I see a couple of spots out there. Yeah, there's two exits on the northeast side, Mike. That's, that's the only thing that's giving us problems right now. Okay. Nothing else, though. So if you are heading on the main lanes anywhere in the city, expect a smooth ride on the way to work. It's looking good there, but we are still dealing with these two accidents uh, on the northeast side. This one being uh, at pretty much at the intersection of Gibbs Brawl Road at Walsham. It's a two-vehicle accident. That one should be getting cleared up very soon, and this accident as well. 
this is a one vehicle accident at Thousand Oaks and Preston Hollow Drive where a vehicle slammed into a light pole. So just be careful when driving out there. Roadways still could be a little slick. There could be debris on the roadway. Just drive a little bit slower than usual. Go that and, and uh, wear your seatbelt. Make sure you're safe on the way to work. All right, let's take a look at some drive times. If you're 1604 eastbound from 281 to 35, it's nine minutes. And if you're 1604 westbound from 35 to 281, eight minutes. So really good times there. Taking a look outside now at the Trans Guy. 35 at Evans, looking good. Traffic flowing very smoothly, looking great. What else do we have here? 35 in Brooklyn, just up the highway there. Still looking very, very good. And 35 at San Marcos, looking good. So the whole 35 corridor there downtown is looking great. All right. Well, everyone have a safe, wonderful morning. Mark Leslie, back to you. Not just hail, but intense lightning from last night's severe weather. Constant as that storm blew through. San Antonio firefighters were called out to several locations because of fires potentially caused by those lightning strikes. Sarah Acosta live at home and shows us some of that video. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Leslie. Yeah, it was a busy night for San Antonio firefighters as they were responding to several calls around town as that storm blew in between 9 and 10 p.m. But I want to show you this map. This map is all of the fire calls around that time. At least six of those calls because of lightning strikes or possibly lightning strikes. You can see two of them are confirmed lightning strikes causing those fires. The others are still under investigation. But thanks to our viewers who sent in several videos of those lightning storms on KSAC Connect, these lightning strike videos are all similar locations to the map of calls we just showed you. So the first video by Miquel of 2020, he was take he took this in the heart of the east side near Martin Luther King Drive. It was just a beautiful sky. You can see that lightning just lighting up over and over again. I really, really appreciate that video. Now, if we can go to the second video, this one was taken by M. Solace. He was heading towards Babcock Road near Fredericksburg Road. And you see that crazy strike just almost looks like it's striking down onto the street there. I just love that video so much. It just shows how intense this lightning storm was. Now, this third video by Elena Thomas was taken near Bulverde Road, and you can just see how it lights up the sky. And those strikes are so intense. And like we said, those strikes all were all those videos from Case that Connect were similar locations to that fire call road. And one of those strikes caused a home to actually burn on the far north side near 1604 and 281 near Encino Park in an area where new homes are being built, built near Redline Road. That strike going through the roof around 10 p.m., that home is still under construction and no one was living in it. Firefighters say at least $10,000 in damage to that home. So thank you so much to our viewers for sending in all of those videos and photos through KSAC Connect. Please continue to do so and on our KSAC weather app, and we'll hopefully be able to show them either on air or online. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. A man is behind bars this morning after he sent San Antonio police officers on a chase around the city. It happened around 3 o'clock this morning when police say the man was driving on the wrong side of the road. After about a 45-minute chase, the man stopped at Loop 410 and Fredericksburg Road. Police say he tried to run, but he was detained for suspicion of DWI. Police trying to piece together the motive behind an east side shooting that left one man in critical condition. It happened just before 11 last night in the 100 block of Sanders. Police say the suspect fired several shots at the victim and a car parked outside of a house. The victim was taken to the hospital with three gunshot wounds. Police are still looking for the suspect. And this morning we have new information on a wrong way driver killed in Converse. Police say the man believed to have crashed in oncoming traffic is 26 year old Brett Weissman. He is from Schertz. Tuesday's crash happened on FM 1516 near Ben Zingelman Road. Witnesses told police Weissman was crossing into oncoming traffic to try to get around slower vehicles, but he ended up crashing into a car head on. The three victims and that car were taken to the hospital and expected to be okay. And this morning, family members showing us photos of Miranda Malowski. She was found stabbed after jumping from a moving vehicle on Cree Trail over the weekend. A mother of three on her way to becoming a corrections officer with the state and just graduated from the academy just days before her death. Bear County deputies say Michael Gonzalez, who had children with Malowski, is considered a suspect in her death. Well, Bear County now has more than 2,500 cases of COVID-19. Mayor Ron Nuremberg and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf say there were an additional 45 cases yesterday, pushing us across the mark.
There are now 70 deaths in the county as well. And while there are recoveries, there are still more than 1100 active cases. But the mayor says even though the numbers are going up, including hospitals, we are still in good shape. The time it takes to double our cases is slowing down, he says, and testing continues. Less than 4% of those cases are positive. Our positivity rate over the last several weeks has gone down. We maintain a strong level of capacity in our hospitals and the severity of illness is also under control. We are seeing that that number of positive patients tick up, but they're moderately ill. You can find more information about COVID-19 in Bear County right now on KSAT.com. The Texas Supreme Court has ruled that a lack of immunity to coronavirus does not qualify a person to apply for mail in voting. Court agreed with Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton that the risk of contracting the virus does not meet current state qualifications. Paxton and other state officials have made unsupported claims that mail in voting would lead to an increase in voter fraud, while many Texans have expressed their fear over in person voting during this pandemic. Well, the country passed a grim milestone. More than 100,000 lives have now been lost due to COVID-19. Meanwhile, 14 states continue to see a growing number of cases. ABC's Ines de la Quatera has more. Good morning. That grim milestone coming less than four months after the first case of COVID-19 was diagnosed in the U.S. This morning, more than 100,000 lives lost to COVID-19 in the U.S. That's higher than the number of U.S. military combat deaths in every conflict since the Korean War. This country, as I say often, has been through some, some really challenging, terrible times. President Trump made no mention of those lost during his trip to Florida Wednesday, while his 2020 opponent, former Vice President Joe Biden, says the grim milestone could have been avoided. There are moments in our history so grim, so heartrending, that they're forever fixed in each of our hearts, a shared grief. Today is one of those moments. Meanwhile, the nation pushing on with reopening. Washington, D.C. will lift its stay-at-home order on Friday. More Las Vegas hotels are planning to reopen June 4th. It's not burden at all. I mean, you're just, you're just trying to be safe for everybody. Cases now rising in at least 14 states. Dr. Anthony Fauci also said a second wave is not inevitable and that there's a good chance the nation will have a vaccine by the end of the year. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. 610, 67 degrees. Google is facing a lawsuit over tracking users. Find out who's bringing forth the charges. Maybe worried about taking your social security out early? Just ahead, we have some reasons why you may want to consider it. And live cam giving us a look outside. Nice to have a little break from the severe weather, but another round is coming our way probably tonight. Mike is tracking it and has details. Six fourteen. Most financial experts will suggest waiting as long as possible to claim your Social Security benefits. That's because if you take them at age sixty-two rather than waiting until your full retirement age, you can expect up to a thirty percent reduction in monthly benefits. But there are some good reasons to claim earlier. Perhaps R.J. Marquez reports. You've been paying into Social Security your whole working life, and now you're eligible for benefits. But most experts will tell you not to claim just yet. You want to wait as long as possible because that produces the largest amount of money and literally translates into hundreds of thousands of dollars more in benefits if you do, in fact, live a long life. But there are some good reasons you may want to consider claiming at age 62. The first, you don't expect to live a long life. Your Social Security break-even age is the age at which the total amount you've received by delaying benefits surpasses the total amount you would have received by claiming earlier. For most people, that's somewhere in their early to mid-80s. Another reason to claim sooner? You have a good retirement fund. If you don't necessarily need the extra Social Security cash, you may want to claim early so you can enjoy your retirement even more. And you may consider claiming early if you're married and have a plan. For example, the lower earning spouse may decide to claim early so you have some money to spend right away while the higher earning spouse might decide to delay. Another reason to claim at age 62, you have no other steady source of income and need money now. Many people in this situation have no choice but to claim early. R.G. Marcus, KSAT 12 News. It's exactly 616. Let's find out exactly what's happening on the roadways. Nick? 
Yeah, things are looking good out there. Uh, looks like the accidents we've had on the northeast side are about cleared up now, but all, all around the city in the main lanes and highways, things are looking great. Expect a smooth ride. Look at this 35 southbound from the northeast side of 1604 to downtown 12 minutes. And if you're 30 found 35 northbound from the southwest side of 1604 to downtown 12 minutes as well. So you got time to make a pit stop if you are on the way to work now. Uh, 10 at Proband going smooth there. Uh, not too many cars on the eastbound lanes. Uh, 90 and couples looking great. Things are looking good all around 90. Uh, let's see what else we have. 281 at, Qu at the quarry looking good and 35 at 37. Traffic picking up normal there for 10 and Cherry Ridge as well. So what's the biggest size hail you guys saw last Marble. night? Marble? Marble. Marble. That's a good thing. It's better mm -hmm. than that. I didn't see any. He I, sized yeah. uh, out my way too. And you and I are both kind of north northwest, Nick. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah that way. Now the other thing on top of all the hail, the wind, as I've been mentioning this morning, is all wind gust at the airport of 53 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. But the uh, storm reports just came in from the uh, Weather Service, and in Gillespie County, they recorded a wind gust just south of a Fredericksburg up to 80 miles per hour, and in Castle Hills. There was wind gusts of 66 miles per hour, Terrell Hill 61 miles per hour. And so if you have some uh, tree damage, if there's debris strewn about, it was because of those straight line winds. Now, this is some of the hail and a lot of it was pea sized and this is just there should be just dirt and grass right there, but it is covered with hail. And as this says, it would pelted the neighborhood for about 15 minutes. Now we are looking at the potential for more severe storms primarily in the western half of the viewing area and that's going to be about the same timeline as timeline as yesterday late this in the afternoon and then going into tonight temperatures right now we're a couple of degrees below normal of uh, low to mid 60s on average around the area we still have this upper low right up there around northwestern arkansas and that keeps us in this northwesterly flow you get these little bits of energy to sweep around here kind of a volatile atmosphere and do get some of these severe storms. So two different computer models and most of them, both of them basically agree on what's going to be going on late this afternoon. We start to see some of those thunderstorms uh, develop out in our western counties that will continue on into the evening hours and then overnight. Now this particular computer model does have a couple of very strong cells trying to develop right around the metropolitan area in the wee hours tomorrow morning and then moving on through. So just about by the time we're on the air tomorrow morning or maybe a little bit before that, according to this computer model, those storms would be on out of here. So that's the one thing with the, a lot of times when you get these evening storms to develop, then they form up those nighttime storm complexes that move on through. Now, different computer model, same solution basically as far as late in the afternoon, some of the thunderstorms developing primarily hill country and then working their way down to the south and to the southeast. This also has a few more storms throughout the evening hours but it doesn't have quite the intense cell in and around the metropolitan area. So it's uh, overall we are going to be seeing, you know, everything is pretty much in agreement. We are going to be seeing showers, thunderstorms developing to the west later on tonight. Whether we get one or two of those nighttime storm complexes to develop, that's going to be kind of a, a wait and see type situation. All of the areas under the marginal risk for severe storms and then Hondo off to the west of there, that gets bumped up to a slight risk about a number two on a scale of one to five. Again, large hail and high winds are going to be the biggest threats with this. Could have some pretty hefty downpours, although these storms, like last night, moved along fairly quickly, so they didn't sit in one spot, but did dump some pretty hefty rain amounts. Picked up an inch and a quarter of rain out there at the airport. So that will be one of the problems as well. But again, high winds and hail. A small tornado trying to spin up, that's always an outside risk, and that's what happened up around Gillespie County last night. There was a tornado warning there for it looked like there was a little bit of rotation with some of those winds. Now, this is going to be the end of the rain chances for a while and these uh, potentially severe storms because this low after today is finally going to get on out of here. We'll have the high trying to build on in. So that's going to give us more sunshine and like I said, get rid of the rain chances in through the weekend. But the nice thing is it's not just going to kind of plunk down right on top of us because a lot of times when that happens in the summer, that's when we get those really, really intensely hot days. But temperatures as of right now are going to be staying pretty close to normal readings all the way through the, uh, the weekend and going into the first part of next week, although there is a small chance for some rain by Monday of next week. 83 at noon today, mostly cloudy skies, some sunshine obviously mixed on in here, but we will have 
um, more clouds than sun, I think. And then some of those thunderstorms developing out to the west later on late today into the evening hours. 90 for a high temperature, uh, excuse me, upper 80s today for a high temperature. And then uh, some of those thunderstorms may be holding together overnight into the early morning hours tomorrow. Then after that, fairly decent stretch of weather in through the weekend and the first part of next week, although a couple of showers Monday. Unbelievable stretch of wild weather we've had in the last yeah. week or so. So just get through tonight. Yep. All right, thanks, Mike. Right now we're at 621, 67 degrees. The state of Arizona is suing Google over privacy concerns. We have more after the break. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a Polar Pop. We are Circle K. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Can I have a little more? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I love you. Sail the ship. Chop the tree. Look at me. All Has you ever tried one of these bars made over at Red Twix? Why? Our special cookie is cascaded with caramel and cloaked in chocolate. Ever wondered? Try both. Pick a side. Twix. Introducing new Voltaren Arthritis Pain Gel, the first and only full prescription strength, non-steroidal, anti-inflammatory gel available over the counter. New Voltaren is powerful arthritis pain relief in a gel. Voltaren, the joy of movement. In this morning's GMA First Look, face masks and hot weather. About With summer mask. heat starting so to arrive, see. wearing a mask can feel downright miserable. On a 78 degree day, I use a remote thermometer to gauge the temperature of the mask I'm wearing. Heat will definitely make it more difficult for people to be outside with masks on, but it is not impossible. Dr. Anne Ramoyne is an infectious disease professor and worked extensively studying Ebola in Africa. She says while wearing a mask in the heat is hard, there are some ways to make it more comfortable. Wear a mask that is light in color because dark colors will draw the sun to you. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have all the tips to keep you cool. Plus, Dr. Jen Ashton and a dermatologist weigh in live with what you need to know to keep yourself protected and your skin healthy. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. State of Arizona is suing Google. The state claims the company tracked Android user location without consent and that the tracking took place even when the feature was manually turned off. Google claims its products have robust location data controls. And Samsung is out with new details about its upcoming debit card program. It's called Samsung Money, and it will link directly with existing Samsung Pay app accounts. Samsung says there will be no account fees. The card will be available this summer. Your time now, 626, 67 degrees. Coming up. You probably don't need reminding of how the coronavirus brought life as we know it to a grinding halt. While everyone was quarantining, we put the brakes on our series known as While You Were Sleeping. But just like a lot of things we enjoy, it's back now. This time around, we take a look at what happens overnight to make sure it's a good day on the golf course. It's a race against time from the start of their shift. Keepers at the Brackenridge Park Golf Course have a long to-do list, all to be done before morning tea time. As you'll see just ahead, sand traps aren't the only hazards they face on the course. A local woman took pictures of families on their porches during quarantine. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. Why she says that hobby turned into therapy. Outside with live cam, unbelievable storms in the area last night. Waking up this morning, probably picking up the pieces. Maybe have to make an insurance phone call or two. We're sorry about that. We're going to recap the storms, get an update on the uh, CPS Energy power outages as well. Good morning to you. It's Thursday. It is May 28th. Thank you for being with us this morning. Boy, those were some intense storms. We might get more again this afternoon, which we'll get details in a minute. But how are the roads looking? Roads are looking smooth. They're looking yeah. great right now. And Mike, what is the very latest this morning, sir? You know, it's funny looking at this picture 
It's almost identical to what it was yesterday at this time. Just about the same thing, a beautiful sunrise out there, and then things started to fire up in the afternoon. And it's a very similar situation, except it's kind of moved to over in the other side of the viewing area. Show you that in a second. 66, 67, pardon me, here in town. 64 at Balverde, low 60s, and even uh, 59 right now in Kerrville. And uh, pollen mold is on the high side, but it came down a whole bunch from uh, the previous day's reading. Now, mostly cloudy skies. Um, some sunshine obviously thrown on in here. Pleasant temperatures this morning and then keep a lot of clouds around throughout the rest of the day. We will have storms developing primarily off to the west today. Yesterday it was north and northeast. Now it's mainly north and northwest and they will continue to fire up late this afternoon, dinner time into the evening hours. Some of those could be on the strong to potentially severe side. Again, Large hail, high winds are going to be some of the biggest threats, and they will continue to work their way down to the south to southeast, kind of the same direction as the storms did last night. And we will have <clears throat> perhaps a couple lingering storms early tomorrow morning. Then we'll start to clear out, and the whole weather pattern is going to be changing. So we're going to have more sunshine around here mixed in with clouds this weekend. And the nice thing is it'll be seasonably hot, but not brutally hot this weekend. Details on that coming up in a couple of minutes. Once again, time saver traffic. And yeah, I mean, last half hour, what? You had a couple of minor accidents out there, and they're gone? Yeah, minor accidents, that's about it. Other than that, it's been very smooth all day, Mike, or all morning, I'm sorry. If you're heading to work right now, expect a smooth ride. Things are looking great out there. you got time for a pit stop. However... It could be a little slick on the roadway still, so please be careful. Use your uh, go the speed limit, wear your seatbelt. We want you to make it to work safely, okay? All right, let's take a look at uh, the trans guide. Uh, it looks like it froze on me a little bit there. Uh, but nonetheless, no accidents. Things are looking good out, outside right now and on the highway. So uh, we'll get this taken care of. Mark Leslie, back to you. All right, Nick, thank you very much. We want to get you updated on the power outages around the Alamo City this morning, and they have been significant overnight. At last check, about 2,300 customers still affected after those severe storms last night. That's down, though, from about 10,000, around 2.30 this morning. Again, you're looking at some of those hot spots on the outage map. To check out the outage map for yourself, head over to ksat.com. And we'll continue, of course, throughout the morning to show you more of the damage that you guys have sent in. And your morning headlines protest over the death of George Floyd escalated overnight in Minneapolis. The outrage comes after video showed a police officer's knee on his neck during an arrest. This morning, the mayor of Minneapolis is calling for that officer to be charged. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. Protests in Minneapolis turned violent for a second consecutive night. Demonstrators demanding justice for the death of George Floyd, who died in police custody. Cameras captured the final moments of Floyd's life in handcuffs, with Officer Derek Chauvin's knee on his neck. Floyd is heard begging for air. After about five minutes into the video, he stops moving and appears unconscious. Officer Chauvin's knee still planted firmly on his neck. Police were on the scene after a 911 call said someone was trying to use a force check at a store. This morning, the mayor of Minneapolis is calling for Officer Chauvin to be arrested and charged. You know, what we witnessed on that video was hard. The notion that you or I would have been put in jail upon doing something like that, and he was not, it's just wrong. Chauvin, a Minneapolis police veteran who reportedly was among several officers investigated after a deadly shooting in 2006. A grand jury later declined to indict. In this case, surveillance video shows the officers approaching and arresting Floyd. He's seen talking with them, not appearing to resist, as police have claimed. A new report from the fire department says when it met up with EMTs on the way to the hospital, medics performed pulse checks several times, finding none. The four police officers involved in the incident, including Chauvin, have been fired. Overnight, people again taking to the streets, where several businesses were looted, and this auto zone set on fire. Many other demonstrators marching peacefully. And are literally marching through traffic. And now protests are spreading to other cities. About 500 people marched in downtown Los Angeles. People also gathered in Houston, where Floyd is originally from. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Well, former Vice President Joe Biden says he's hoping to pick his running mate around August 1st. The presumptive Democratic nominee made the announcement at a fundraiser yesterday. Biden's already announced that he will have a woman on his ticket. He says the candidates he's considering include women from every part of the country and women of color. Well, San Antonio water theme parks are getting their properties ready to open. That's after the governor announced they can reopen starting tomorrow. Still many of them are waiting until about mid-June to start opening up. Others are still working to finalize a plan. James Kinney, vice president of Splashtown, says 
They have a lot of painting and hiring to do. Around 150 positions will be available this summer. Kenny says the most challenging thing is trying to figure out the whole social distancing guidelines. I'm still frantically ordering face masks and sanitizer and sanitizer stations, uh, signage for COVID protocol. Uh, there's just a lot of uh, new things that we've got to do to, to get ready this year. Because parks can only operate at 25% capacity, they urge customers to buy tickets ahead of time to guarantee entry. For information on when other water parks will reopen, just go to ksat.com. A San Antonio nurse on the COVID-19 front lines reflecting on her experience and how her family at home is adjusting. If you've been following KSAT 12 News, we first met Shirley St. Louis about uh, a month ago. She's been in New York for two months helping patients in one of the hardest hit areas of the country. From there, she set up a birthday parade for her 13-year-old daughter. While Shirley is away, her mom is helping take care of her children. Shirley says she's constantly communicating with them and hopes to te teach her children an important lesson. I want to be an example to my daughters and show them what it truly means to be um, a vessel that's serving that, you know, serving God's purpose and doing good. Shirley is committed to staying in New York till June 20th. Back here at home, as families are stuck indoors across the Alamo City due to COVID-19, one woman put her photography hobby to good use. Yep, Sarah Costa spoke with local porch photographer who says taking pictures of her neighbors turned into a form of therapy. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Leslie. That's Caitlin Cox we're talking about. She works for a nonprofit, but she said when her hours got cut short, she was able to spend more time on her hobby, which is photography. Uh, she said that she didn't under she didn't realize what that hobby would end up turning into. Caitlin Cox is not a full time photographer, nor considers herself a professional, but knew it was something she wanted to do during quarantine. I thought it was just such a cool concept while everyone is home and not leaving their houses. What a cool idea just to capture what everyone's doing while stuck you know, with their families. So she put out a note on her Hollywood Park next door app asking if any of her neighbors wanted porch photos. The response was overwhelming. She says she only charges 15 to $20 because it's more about the experience. Well, I really didn't do it to make money off of it. Um, I put a lot of time and energy into it, but more because it's still just something that is exciting to me. She says just being able to get out of her house and interact with people has been helping her stay sane and believes it's also therapeutic for the families she photographs. You get to see a sense of relief when we were, you know, when I'd pull up and people were able to come outside and just interact with another person. Maybe they hadn't left the house or they've been at home with their kids or their spouse without anything but Zoom calls and phone calls uh, before that. Her favorite photographs are the candid ones. You could tell they were all getting on each other's nerves and the kids were just dumping confetti down over their heads. And once they thought the camera was off and I kept capturing pictures, but that's when the real, you know, chaos started to happen. Cox says she hopes the families can share these photos years later to remind themselves what they went through and what we can overcome. There are funny moments and there are candid moments, but then they're also really special because this will be something that's in the history books and they'll have a way to remember it. Something for the history books. Caitlin and I were talking about how now we look at World War II era photos and it just gives us a glimpse into what they were going through then. She says she hopes her porch photos will do the same for future generations. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Thank Mark you. Mark Thank you, Sarah. 639, 67 degrees. When you look at a golf course, you may not realize the amount of work it takes to keep it looking pristine. After the break, we're going to see what is done on the course while you were sleeping. Six forty three, the unofficial sport of American presidents is also a great pastime for many other people, but the entire game of golf depends a lot on those who spend time on the course overnight. Katrina Weber got a look at their technique before the coronavirus ever struck. So while you won't see any masks or social distancing, you still can see the story. It's this week's while you were sleeping. the start of their engines, the race is on. This team is out to beat the clock to make sure the greens and everything in between at the Brackenridge Park Golf Course are good to go. They know the course pretty good. 
they know exactly what they're going to do, what mowing pattern they're going to mow that day. In order to outpace early morning golfers, Robert Cano and his crew get an even earlier start. Along with grooming the grass, they add to the challenge of the game, repositioning all 18 holes every day. In the dark, they have to watch out for hazards and not just sand traps. Usually a lot of skunks out here, uh, skunks, mainly raccoons, possums. They're actually part of the package that comes with this historic oasis in the center of the city. Brackenridge is part of the Alamo City Golf Trail, the oldest public 18-hole course in Texas. Today's technology, though, often comes into play here. If I want to water something, I could just pull my phone out and test a sprinkler, or if that green needs water, I could water it with my phone. Still, there's a lot of manpower at work all trained professionals. It definitely takes a certain kind of person to make the cut as a greenskeeper. This job involves a lot of science, but they also have to have a bit of an artistic eye. You gotta have a passion for it, and there's a lot of ins and outs to it. It's not just a matter of mowing and watering and cutting grass. But if all goes as planned, they're able to do that and more, even before the sun opens its eyes. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And beautiful shots. Yeah, 645 right now. Let's check on the roadways. Nick, what's happening? Not much. Things are looking good out there. If you're headed to work right now, you got time to get some food and stop for some gas because there are no accidents to report right now on the highways. Take a look at these drive times. Eastbound 151 to 1604 to 90. You got nine minutes. And eastbound Highway 90 to 1604 to 35, 12 minutes. So great times there. Uh, expect a smooth ride everywhere you go. Let's take a look at the Trans Guide. 10 at Proband looking good right now. What else do we have here? 90 at Couples. That's looking really good. What else? Let's see. We have 10 at Medical looking smooth. 281 at St. Mary's looking great. And 410 at Cherry Ridge also looking good. I don't know how I did it, but I slept through that somehow last I night. I don't know how you did it either. I got up this morning. I was like, what has happened? I want to take what you're taking so I sleep better. Look at this. Thank you so much, everyone, who shared all this video and Boy, that was quite the storm. Yeah, and we had a video coming in, pictures coming in, veil, a hail of a variety of different sizes. Then we had video coming in like this from McKell 2020, Whoa. taken to the heart of the east side near MLK. Some of that cloud to cloud, cloud to ground, lightning, quite a light show. We also got video from another viewer, M. Salas. He took something while heading towards Jeez. Babcock Road near Fredericksburg Road. And there you see it, lots of lightning. Elena Tamez uh, took this next video up near Bull Verde Whoa. Road. And these storms were wicked last night. They were moving back through, but uh, just the latest round of South Texas severe weather and our storm team was all over it last yeah, night they once did a again. Great job. And that picture behind you yeah. tells the story too. And of course, on top of that were the, the winds. Now, there was a um, tornado warning that was issued uh, around Gillespie County last night for a radar indicated there was a little bit of circulation indicated on radar, but also some of the winds uh, gusts that were reported uh, in Gillespie County, 80 miles per hour, Castle Hills, 66 miles per hour, Terrell Hills had wind gusts this, uh, late last night of 61 miles per hour. And so that's one of the reasons why there's a, a along with the hail that ripped a lot of the leaves out of the trees, all the trees and uh, the leaves down, branches all over the place. And yeah, a lot of cloud to ground lightning. And we may be in for another round of it tonight. Temperatures are starting off in the uh, low mid 60s, actually a little bit below normal. Another pleasant morning. It's Today is almost a repeat of yesterday. It's really nice out there this morning. We've got some sunshine. We are going to have a mixture of sun and clouds throughout the day, and we still have this low centered up there right around uh, northwest Arkansas, and it's this northwesterly flow. And so this gets some of those little disturbances to sweep on through here. And with the afternoon heating, the atmosphere becomes more unstable. That's why we're going to see the potential for more uh, storms later on this afternoon going into this evening. Rapid update computer model. By dinner time, basically uh, late afternoon, we get a few of those storms developing out to the west. They will continue to work down to the southeast in that northwesterly flow that we have around here. And then this one has a couple of those uh, nighttime complexes trying to develop in the wee hours tomorrow morning, working their way on through here. So most of this we may still have a little bit of leftover rain if indeed this does 
come to be that storm cell moving on through the area tomorrow morning and we'll have some clouds in the morning and then uh, clearing out somewhat by the afternoon. Now different computer model, uh, roughly the same solution. By dinner time, we get some of those storms developing there. High winds, hail are going to be the biggest threats again. Those will continue to move on through. And this one does not have quite as intense of a uh, thunderstorm cell trying to develop around here, but we may still have some leftover rain tomorrow morning. And then again, we start to clear on out. The entire area is under the marginal risk for severe storms. And then from roughly Hondo out to the west, that's where that gets bumped up to the slight risk. So on a scale of one to five, this would green is a one. This would be a two. Now compared to yesterday, of course, we had that enhanced risk for storm. So that was a, a much better chance for severe weather yesterday, but still got a good shot at it later on today. And once again, it's going to be the hail and it's going to be the high winds that are the biggest things to look out for. Of course, can't completely rule out one or two minor or small tornadoes to try and spin up. 83 degrees today at noon, and we're going to be leaning toward the cloudier side. Sunshine mixed in 88 for a high temperature today, so still slightly below normal. A couple of storms are going to be developing out to the west and Morgan developed tonight, maybe lasting into tomorrow morning and then partly cloudy skies in the afternoon. We stay in the upper 80s uh, right around 90 over the weekend. So the whole weather pattern is going to now start to change after today. The nice thing is also we're not going to see anything too extreme temperature wise. The weekend looks Normal. beautiful. Yeah, weekend looks pretty nice. We'll just get through tonight. Yep. Thank you, Mike. 650 right now, 67 degrees. The graduating class of 2020 is moving on to the next challenge while global pandemic encompasses the world. And despite the current situation, their accomplishments should be celebrated. So join us tomorrow on GMSA. We have our next piece in our great graduate segment. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up. Take a look at downtown San Antonio on your early Thursday morning. We'll be back. A man is in serious condition after being shot three times last night on the east side. Good morning. I'm Sarah Costa. Police say they were called out to the east side around 1045 last night to the 100 block of Sanders. The man who was shot was in his 20s. He was visiting the home on Sanders, standing outside in front of the house. That's when police say the shooter shot at the man and home multiple times. The victim was shot three times. A parked car in front of the house was also hit. That man was taken to Bamsey in serious condition. Police say they continue to search for a suspect. From home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Right now, 654, 67 degrees. Nick, how are the roadways looking? Things are looking smooth right now. Uh, all around the city, no accidents to report. All the roadways looking good. 37 and fair there on the southeast side, looking very smooth. Uh, we also have 10 in San Pedro near the airport, looking great. Just be careful with that sun going eastbound and wear your seatbelt. You know, it's interesting. Today looks a lot like yesterday and may look a lot like, well, yeah, and, and the afternoon may look a lot like yesterday as well. We've got a beautiful start this morning, a few clouds still hanging around there. Temperatures are a little bit on the cooler side. It's pleasant. The humidity is not bad. Low, uh, mid to low 60s, so a little bit below normal. We'll be up to 80 at noon, 88 for a high temperature. And then we're going to start to see some thunderstorms develop once again late this afternoon, but this time primarily off to the west and northwest and we have the threat for severe weather again. All of the area is under the marginal risk for severe storms and then about Hondo off to the west that gets bumped up to the slight risk. High winds and large hail are going to be the biggest threats again and you know a small isolated tornado is possible although not very likely. Some of those uh, showers and storms may extend into the wee hours tomorrow morning. Could have some damp roads tomorrow and then got a nice stretch of weather. The, old, the whole weather pattern is going to start to change a little bit and weekend looks pretty nice. Fantastic. We're ready to be done with these storms for now. I'm ready for a little sunshine and just normal, smooth weather for Texas. A breather. Yes. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Have a great morning. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9. Good Morning America is next.